what are some of the biggest stars playing at this summer Olympics. Now, this summer's Olympics is going to be very, very, uh, very, very interesting. It's going to be a fun Olympic Games. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Olympic soccer. I know some people look at it more of a negative light, but I happen to be on, you know, more of the positive light in terms of, uh, in terms of Olympic football, I love watching Olympic football. I think Olympic football uh, football does belong at the Olympics, contrary to some opinions of certain certain people out there. But I believe football belongs in the Olympics. I think the Olympics is a display of the greatest athletes, and I think soccer is the best sport in the world. So it should be in the Olympics. And really, if it was up to me, I think it would be more of a bigger, bigger thing at the Olympics than just another youth competition because that's what it is a U23 competition with a few overage players I'd really make it kind of like a you know it could be a substitute for the Confederation Cup now that they don't have the Confederation Cup anymore you know teams could take the Olympics seriously now obviously it's tricky when you have the European Championships and Copa America in that same window teams are not going to be able to send you know example, France, they're not going to be able to send Mbappe to boast the Olympics. And actually, Mbappe is one of the age-eligible players, so that's not even a good... Okay, uh, Griezmann. France are not going to be able to send Griezmann to boast the Olympics and Euros. It's just impossible. Clubs won't approve of it, and, you know, it'll be too much for the player. And by the way, also something, if you make it a, 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 a normal international tournament... You know, and you make it a FIFA sanctioned tournament, you know, the clubs are not going to have a right to, you know, deny the players from, you know, going to the Olympics. So uh, I think that will make the Olympics even more of a big deal as well. And yeah, I just, uh, I think FIFA could make the men's side better. Basically what it is for the women's side, I think they could get clever with it. Now, obviously, there's, you know, there's a lot of football already players have to play, and it's just going to be a whole other thing of people um, people being critical, or why add football, why add football, why add football, but you leave it up to the players. If they want to play at the Olympics, they should be allowed to play at the Olympics. The club should not have a right to ban, in my opinion, and I think FIFA could change it up and, you know, make this more of a tournament that's respected. But yes, there are still some big stars competing at this summer's Olympics. Um, there's always big stars competing at the summer Olympics. If you go back to the last Olympics, Spain basically took their full U23 team. I mean, Spain literally took their full U23 team. And they took a lot of players that were playing at the, um, at the Euros earlier that year. I think Pedri, Pedri was on the... Uh, yeah, well, obviously Pedri was on that team. There was a, uh, there was the um, people talking about how many how much games he played, but yes, um, Pedri was on that team. Oyar Sabal was on that team. Uh, uh, Eric Garcia was on that team after playing in the uh, in the Olymp uh, in the European Championship. Plenty of players that played in the European Championship were among the team because in Spain, they the Spanish Federation has a rule where you cannot block a player from joining the Spain Olympic team in La Liga. So Spain, where the U23 team was able to take advantage of it. Uh, now they're not doing that same thing. Spain, Spanish Federation, they're not taking Lamine Umal and Nico Williams. But they still have a few players that were, um, you know, you know, some very good players. Pau Cubarsi from Barcelona. Um, is going to be part of the team. And uh, Eric Eric Garcia, he's also going to be a part of the team uh, from Barcelona. He actually is a silver medalist at the Olympics already. He won the, the last Olympics. Fermin Lopez, also another Barcelona, the Barcelona trio. He, they're going to be involved. So there's, um, you know, they're not taking the full team like they took at the last Olympics, the full year 2019. But... You know, they have some very good players in there, and they're they're going to be a threat. Um, Morocco, they're, they've taken Akraf Hakimi, actually. Um, I'm surprised he was able to get the his um, release from PSG. He actually goes in as a as a um, overage player with him being age 25. And he has an opportunity to represent his country on the Olympic stage. 
it would be a great opportunity for him. Great opportunity for him. Abdi Ezalzuli is also going to be involved in that team. If you remember Abdi Ezalzuli, he was on uh, he was on Barcelona a few years ago. He was one of the youngsters that were really playing at the Xavi. Now he's um, playing at uh, Beti- Betis, Real, uh, Real Betis. And, uh, and yeah, he's a, he's a pacey player, and he'll be an option. He'll be a, he'll be a good winging op- winger option for for uh, this Moroccan Olympic team. You have the likes of um, Nabi Keita, who uh, he's going to be playing uh, for Guinea. He's going to be captaining Guinea. Guinea, they were able to get in. They were one of the last teams to get in through a playoff. They actually happened to be in the group with the U.S., so it's going to be interesting to see uh, Nabi Keita, how the U.S. can contain him. But he's a very, very good player. Um, he's an overage player, obviously, with him being 29, playing at Liverpool all the years. Now he's at Werder Bremen. And, yeah, um, and um, it's going to be you know, interesting how they handle handle him. El Neni, he's going to be one of the overage players. Formerly Arsenal midfielder, but uh, now he's um, uh, now I believe he's a free agent. But he's going to be one of the overage players for Egypt. Uh, Ryan Cherky, Cherky playing for France, also Olympic Lyon as a player. I really really like France. They got a like. Um, let's be honest with regarding France. France they got a super team, and they don't even have their best best U twenty three players. They they have Olise who was one of their the their one of their best U twenty three players, but they didn't take a full U like they didn't take the likes of Chuameni, Kamavinga, Saliba, but man this team is still loaded. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! They are loaded. They they are loaded with some strong, um. They're loaded with some strong, over age players. With Lacazette and Jean Philippe Mateta, um, defensively, defensively they're very very strong, uh, in there with Loic Bade, Bradley Loku, Castillo Lobeca, Adrian Trufard, Kylian Sil, uh, Sildilia, and then Songo to Magessa. There's not much holes in this team. Midfield too got some brilliant midfielders in there: Manu Kune, Enzo Milliot, Desiree Dui. Magnus uh, Akulochi and Joris Chatort. And then I told you about Ryan Shirk, uh, Shirky. He's, in my opinion, I like his profile of player playing at Lyon. I think he is, um, he's going to get a move to a big club soon. We heard about Borussia Dortmund talking to him. I think he's a player with quality. They also have the likes of Jean-Philippe Mateta, Alexander Lacazette. Michael Olise, Arnold Kalimundo. This is by far the most talented teams at this Olympic Games. And they're also playing in their home nation of France. Their home nation of France. They're going to pack every stadium. They have the quality of the players. The one question is their manager, Thierry Henry. Is he a great manager? Is he not? I don't know. And will that really get exposed at this Olympic level when you have this much talent? I don't know. But is he able to keep up with other managers? <clears throat> in terms of in-game tactician, in terms of um, being able to manage a squad, I'm very, very interested. But let's be fair. This With this quality of players, they're going to pack every stadium because the tournament is going to be in France and they're going to have the home support of a nation trying to bring back, trying to bring the Olympic gold medal to France, to France for the first time ever. Uh, it's going to be uh, fantastic to watch. And I'm already saying this, you know, you know we're here in the U.S., as a U.S. fan, if you're rooting for the U.S. in that opening game against France, brace for impact. Brace for impact. That's all I'm going to say. Absolutely brace for impact because this French team is absolutely loaded. This French team is absolutely loaded. Got quality everywhere. Um... I talked about the U.S. team. They're, they're not that strong, um, in my opinion. They're not that strong, in my opinion. The overage players is 
Walker Zimmerman and Miles Robinson, which can pr- which provides stability in the back. I think they're two decent center backs, okay, and then Georgia Mihailovic in midfield. But there's better over eight players that we could have got, much better over eight players that we could have got. And let's be honest, you look at that team, it's an MLS roster, and it's primarily because, well, the European guys, we couldn't get, well, we tried to get Haji right as an overage player, I heard, but um, Coventry didn't allow that. And, you know, we have some top U23 players that can get in. I mean, almost, you know, you look at the national team, you got Yunus Musa, you got, um, I believe Yunus Musa, is he still U23, actually? Yeah, he is, clearly U23. You got Yunus Musa, Giovanni Reyna, Ricardo Pepe, uh, Faller and Balogun. You got so many U23 players involved in the Copa America roster, but, you know, obviously club situation, they won't release their players, and, you know, we're left with these guys, and, you know, there's serious issues with our fullbacks, in my opinion, and our strikers, Duncan McGuire, who, in my opinion, is not that good. <laughs> Let's just be fair, he's not that good. And he's the only option at number nine, and now, you know, I don't see any of the, any of the attacking players that we have that can play in that false nine role. There's none of them that have that kind of, those kind of qualities, that kind of flexibility to play that role. So, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I don't think this U.S. team is that strong, honestly. But it's, un- it's, a, it's, un- it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I don't want to be too pessimistic. But, yeah, I also, you know, a team, you know, maybe in my opinion, oh, that I think the biggest threat to France of getting the uh, Olympic gold is Argentina, because Argentina has some quality with Julian Alvarez, Ger- Geronimo Rulli, Thiago Almada. They also have a center back um, experience of Nicolas Otamendi. This Argentinian team is loaded. This Argentinian team is loaded, and they have quality, and they also have um. They have quality. And they also have um, uh, experience with Otamendi. They have World Cup winners in Julian Alvarez, Almada, Otamendi. They'll be managed by um, Javier Mascherano, who, um, you know, who's won an Olympic gold medal himself as a player. So he knows how to navigate a team through these, you know, Olympics, and he knows really how it works. So, yeah, I think is. I think it's going to be very, very interesting, very, very interesting uh, uh, Olympics. I definitely think France are favorites, but I think Argentina can definitely give them a run for their money. And Spain also has some quality too, but can they, can they, um, you know, is some of the top players missing out, like a Nicole Williams, like a Laminia Mal, is that going to make them pay? But other than that, it's definitely, in my opinion, France, Argentina, and um, in Spain. Those are the three favorites at these Olympic Games. I don't see the rest of those teams. I think Paraguay with Julio and Ciso. They have a young, dynamic core in Paraguay. I think that could be a threat. Obviously, I spoke about Morocco with Hakimi. In, you know, Morocco has some young players coming up. Uh, Ukraine, they, didn't ha- they weren't able to take some of their top youth, youth guys. You know, the likes of um, um, uh, Mikhailo Mudrik, he's not going to be playing at the Olympics. So, so yeah, um, I don't think they will be that, you know, big of a threat. So, yeah, I'm a... Uh, I think it's going to be a very, very good Olympic Games. Always there's, you know, the one or two players, you know, that really pop and make a name for themselves, um, that really come off. I remember 2012, it was Neymar, it was Mohamed Salah, you know. In, um, there was more in that Olympics, actually. The entire Mexico team, Oribe Perel to Giovanni Dos Santos. <laughs> yeah, that team in 2012. 2016, you had the likes of... of, of um, uh, Serge Gnabry, he made his name at that Olympic Games. Serge Gnabry, that was the big one out of that. Then the last Olympic Games, you know, Marco Correa, uh, uh, Anthony to an extent, but he didn't really live up <laughs> so far. 
But yeah, it, it always gives a chance for these two, three guys to really pop out and make a name for themselves. So I'm excited to see who that will be at this summer's Olympic Games. I really am.